Hello and welcome, this is the next FP1 topic. This is obviously the rectangular hyperbola, um, but in this time we're not looking at it just in Cartesian form, we're looking at it in um, parametric form, okay? Uh, so we've got x equals ct and y is equal to c over t, where c is just this constant, okay? Now to prove to you that obviously um, if this was to be right, which obviously it is, uh, then we should be able to get our, our old friend, the Cartesian form, x, y equals c squared, uh, from deriving these two, putting them together uh, to put it back into Cartesian form. Okay, um, just a word of uh, notice while we're here, most of the exam questions tend to be on the Cartesian form, and you will, you will specifically see it in X8 um, in the question I'm going to link into this video, which is uh, the June 2013 uh, replacement paper, okay, question five. Uh, and that specifically states um, the, it shows you it in that form of X equals 3T and Y is equal to 3 over T. But if it just says X, Y equals C squared, then you obviously have to use the um, Cartesian form. Anyway, going back to this. So what we would do if you wanted to convert it, um, okay, well, we need we need in a form X, Y equals C squared if it is going to um, be, you know, the correct values, okay? Well, let's look at it in the... It, you said you could go through it in um, a number of ways, let's say. Okay, so the way that I'm going to do it is times both sides, okay, by... Um, so I'm set, let me double check. Yeah, I'm going to... We've got x here and we want x, y, okay? So I'm going to times both sides of this x equals ct by y, okay? So it becomes x, y, and on the right, instead of writing y, I'm going to write ct, c over t. So ct times c over t. Well, obviously the t's cancel, okay? So you get x, y is equal to c squared. And all we really did was both times both sides by y, obviously, because... Uh, if you wanted to rearrange that, so it'd be um, y, you know, c is equal to yt, okay? So you could sub it in there, as I said, it doesn't really matter, okay? So you could have easily done, uh, because we said c is equal to yt, and we've got c in the x one, x equals yt um, times ct, okay? And then you could rearrange that. You would always end up with x y is equal to c squared. Okay, so hopefully that's kind of in in a really bad way proved to you that they are the correct values. Okay, so therefore you could have put it into the Cartesian form if you wanted to. Right. So let's go to this differential because that's the whole point of this uh, video. Now, just like when we were deciding what to do when we had parametric functions in uh, uh, the parabola. Okay, so we had the probably in, in the form of a, a parametric equation, okay? And what we did there is we used something called the chain rule, uh, which as I said, there's a video on that, so please do check out my playlist. If it's not already there, uh, it should be up shortly, okay? So what we used in, in that instance is we used the related rate of change. In other words, the chain rule, okay? So what we did is we said, okay, we want dx, dy, sorry, dy dx, dx dy, uh, dy dx, and we said, okay, well, that was equal to dy, uh, and the only thing we can differentiate y with is respect to t, okay? And the same d something must go on top right, so put dt there over dx, and we said we would work that out, okay? So work out the individual terms. Well, dy dt, you can just simply do that. But, however, the first thing that I would do when you've got y is equal to c over t, put y is equal to c t to the minus 1, okay? Because it's quite hard to just differentiate c over t. It's easy to integrate it, but, as I said, that's a different story. Anyway. What we would do is okay. Well, you just do. You follow your standard rules of differentiation now. So therefore, dy dt is equal to negative c uh, t to the minus two, or negative c a uh, negative c over t squared. Okay, so that's dy dt. Okay, so you put that in there. Negative c over t squared. I'm mostly going to be times that by d dt dx. Okay. Well, obviously, all we can do is dx dt. So if we do that, dx dt, uh, because that's c t and t just being a constant that just becomes to c, so therefore the t dx is 1 over that, 
72 to the x is 1 over c, so you times that by 1 over c, therefore the c's cancel, okay, so you're just left with negative 1 over t squared, and that is equal to the gradient function uh, dy dx. Okay, so really it's just applying this knowledge uh, to that question. Now, as I said, um, I mentioned this in a previous uh, little video, um, when, when I was saying about, you could just certain this down to the differential of y over the differential of x, because we always do 1 over x, that doesn't check, over, 1 over the differential of x with respect to t, uh, so you can always just put it in, and if you were to do that, you just end up with c, um, t to the minus 1, or c over, sorry, c, c over t squared, uh, divided by um, c, okay, which would obviously, the c's would cancel, and it would be one, negative 1 over t squared, as we have proved there. Okay, so that's a gradient function, and then you would just apply the same knowledge of C1, okay, that we did in the previous topic. Now, I'm just going to pick plug a random number in here, so, um, I don't know, let's pick C to be, uh, just trying to think. I think we're moving. Okay, so if we let x be 6 when c is 3, okay, so obviously that leaves t to be 2. Say if you were given x is c and x is, sorry, c is 3 and x is 6, you would sub it in to the, obviously the x equation, rearrange to get t, that would give you 2. Okay, so this is just, as I said, it's just an equation that I've come up with off the top of my head, okay? So then you would apply it to this method, obviously you would write out the gradient function if, you know, if you felt like it, obviously, uh, if you wanted to get some marks. Okay, and then sub it into the gradient function, so dy dx is equal to negative 1 over t squared, t being 2, so it's doing 2 squared, so it's negative a quarter. Okay, and then obviously we know what x is, but we want to find out what y is, we know t is 2, so y, and c is 3 obviously, so y is uh, 3 over 2, so therefore you just sub that x, and then x to be 6, okay, and follow your standard y take y1 is equal to m, um, brackets x take x1, y take y1 is equal to m, brackets x take x1, and it just give you a moment if you just want to have a go at sub in line. I mean, obviously, you know, uh, you know, more than capable of, but it was nice to be able to just have a crack at something once in a while. Okay, so what you would do there, so you'd sub in y to be 3 on 2, gradient to be negative quarter, x take 6, okay, and if you were to times it all by 4, okay, so that would be 4y take uh, 6 equals negative x plus 6, okay, rearrange to get x on its own, or, or rearrange to whichever, as I said, you might have just left it as, you know, 4y take 6 equals negative x plus 6, it's completely fine, okay, so you could move this x across, so it would be x plus 4y um, plus 0, okay, because obviously, sorry, Plus two. Take twelve. Apologise, and that's to be your answer. Okay, for the, the gradient function of that curve. All right. So hopefully, as I said, that made not the gradient function, that's just the equation of the curve. Uh, so hopefully, as I said, that makes some kind of um, sense. Really, it's nothing too much. If you want me to do that video again, uh, I will do. But really, it's just a case of uh, using again our rules of. Implicit, uh, sorry, related rates of change or, or the chain rule, okay, and applying it to uh, this situation, okay. So that's always the case for the gradient of a parametric uh, rectangular hyperbola, but uh, more commonly in the FP1 exam, uh, we are tested on well, I've just been through the set, the set of questions that are um, associated with coordinate systems and really it's just it's mainly the parabolas okay uh, and and when it does come to the uh, rectangular hyperbolas it's more on the cartesian form than the parametric obviously you can turn it into a parametric but uh, you know you probably have the idea you might lose all the marks it's always good to actually follow what the question's asking um, but you know that's just what what other people do it's not have to do what you do if you like you that's fine uh, anyway, so thanks for, thanks for watching. Um, I tried to make a bit short because uh, I've had previous comments on videos have gone on for far too long, so I'm trying to address that a little bit. But if you want me to slow down, then please do let me know. Um, or if you want me to have another go at this video, as I've said, that, that is perfectly okay. I don't mind doing that either. 
Alright, um, what I will do, uh, I probably, actually no, because this video is going to go up before the other one. Uh, so, if, obviously if you're watching, still watching, I mentioned before about uh, June 2013, uh, question 5, okay? Um, that is, uh, for obviously the FP1 exam at Excel. As I said, it'll be on my playlist, uh, if it's not, then please do have a look at that video on you know, just search for the paper question five. Uh, that's a quite a good question. It's not necessarily um, asking about this gradient function stuff, but it's a good question for rectangular hyperbola um, in parametric form. It doesn't necessarily ask about the differentiation, well, it doesn't, uh, but it's just, it, it's quite a nice, easy question to get you um, thinking about it, okay? All right, so thanks for watching. As I said, that, that sorry, that question was worth uh, eight marks, I think, so it's quite a good chunk of the paper anyway that June uh, June 2013 re re uh, publish or reprint or whatever uh, question five so anyway thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video hopefully